Hello everyone, this is Mike from Rococo, and in this tutorial, it's going to be a quick one, I'm going to show you how to characterize your animation skeleton that you've exported out of Rococo. So, right here in front of me, I have um, just a sample animation from Rococo Studio. It's the two punch. Um, what's great is that when you export it out of Rococo Studio, uh, it puts a perfect T-pose on your zero frame. So if you don't have a T-pose or um, when you open up Maya, it usually defaults to frame one. So say you scrub through it and you lose your T-pose. Oh no, just uh, extend your timeline to frame zero and you'll have your T-pose because you will need a T-pose to define the skeleton. Um, so I've said characterization a few times in the past. Essentially what this does, it allows you to take your animation skeleton and retarget that animation onto your 3D asset, your character, or whatever you're working with. Um, and characterization just allows the software to uh, define that, that skeleton. So let's jump into it real quick. Um, head over to, uh, click on up here on the top menu, click on the, the human IK uh, menu, and it's gonna give you these options. You're gonna create a character definition, and it's gonna give you this window. Um, so all, all we're going to have to do is, is just assign our joints to this little mannequin over here and save it and then do that to your 3D, your, your other character that your 3D character that you're using, and then they'll, you'll be able to retarget your animation. So let's do this real quick. Great. Um, so I like to do this in Maya. I actually like to do this in the outliner. Um, it's a little bit faster, a little bit easier. Um, and so. Great, so I have the hips. I'm gonna assign it to the hips. I'm gonna right click, assign selected bone. Then I'm gonna hit down, and then I'm gonna do the left thigh. Same deal. Right click, assign selected bone. And it's mirrored. So what that means is that when I assign that left thigh, it's also going to assign the right thigh, which is very nice. Um, great, go down to the shin. And you know, depending on if you created the character or you bought the character on some marketplace, Typically, you're going to run into very different types of naming conventions for skeletons. And this is a great way to not have to worry about that and retarget your skeleton. Great. So now I'm going to go to spine. Now, for the spine, don't worry about the naming conventions. So this skeleton has four spine nodes, uh, four spine joints, excuse me. and when I expand into the spine view, it's gonna give me a lot of options. It's gonna give me a lot of options. Um, so, you know, one, spine one, all the way through, through spine nine. Um, it doesn't matter about the name. It just matters if you go in order from bottom to top. So I've already assigned our sp my spine one to the spine uh, slot. So now I'm gonna go to spine two. Now, if I assign it to spine two, it's actually going to give me an error. So I'm going to clear that and I'm actually going to assign it again from the bottom to top. So I'm going to assign it to one, then three is going to actually going to go into two and they just have, again, from bottom to top. Great. Left shoulder. I'm going to expand the left shoulder, do it on the first one, then left arm. Great. Forearm. And again, it's doing the mirror. Um, if you have finger animation, um, you can define that right here just by expanding out. Uh, this this animation does not have finger animation, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, but if you do plan on keyframing your animation through a control rig, you will need to define that. Because um, if you create the control rig and you don't define that in your characterization, you're not going to get FKIK controllers on the hands. Just just a heads up. Uh, jump down to the neck. A lot of a lot of slots for the neck, but this this skeleton just have, has one neck bone. And then I'm going to assign it selected. Oops, whoops, Daisy. I gotta go to the head, silly. Alrighty, great. So now I have a, a green check. That means that my character is in a perfect T pose. Everything's been assigned. Um, there are more options. There's like uh, hip translation and arm twists and roll view and da 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 da. -da. Um, but this is just a nice, simple, easy going characterization. Um, great. So now what I'll do is I would lock it. And now I can bring in my 3D character, do the same thing, and in the characters, I can select and decide what what is driving that character. So I could say that this skeleton is driving 
um, say it's Bruno from Rococo, I can have this animation drive Bruno skeleton as long as I characterize them both. Um, also, what's really nice is you can save a template. So um, I can save this and let's call it Rococo. Um, oh wait, I already have one. So let's call it Rococo one. Great. So now if I do a new one, uh, don't save. Great. I'm gonna create character definition and I can load it. Oops, I gotta select them all. Computer's yelling at me. Rococo one. Great. Oh, we got an error. What's this error? Let's see here. Left arm. Ah, so there's a prop bone on this character and it wanted to assign the prop to that. So just gonna fix that, change it. All right, great. And we're good to go. So now you don't have to. Uh, so now whenever you export animation from Rococo, you can just load in the template and you don't have to take those five minutes to assign. Um, great. So thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. If you have any questions, um, throw down a question in the comments of this video. Please like this video. Also head over to Rococo.com and of course email us at support at Rococo.com as well. So that's going to do it. Thank you very much for watching. Appreciate it. And until next time.